Fuck this. Let's get Damn out of here. Right. This Hello, shit's everybody. Horrible. Well, you know what this is. It's the shrink rap with uh with Louie Lope. We got Louie Lope. Lope in the house. I am cruise control. And I'm Maxwell Silverhammer. And this is the show for the 12th of or 13th of December. Yes. 12, 13, 2021. Uh and here we are, man. We're gonna Once talk again. about dream analysis, man. Dreams, dream analysis, and also just the nature of like like why we dream and also um the validity of lucid dreaming. And if we've oh, yeah. had any lucid dreaming experiences uh, and ways you can induce it e even um, in terms of medication as well, uh, supplements, as well as uh, various systems that you can uh, look into. Nice. But, oh, uh, fun, fun times, man. Hey, you yeah, know what, man. though? We, we should get this one out the way real quick, because obviously this is a big question that I always get. And actually, Louie asked me this at one point. Now, being that you two have some vision, you obviously can see in your dreams, correct? Yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Bit. For me, so, okay. it's, it's prominent. Yes. yes see, for prominent. me, I because I, I, I've never seen, I've never been able to see. So I have, I've never been able to see in my dreams. I can all my other senses. You know, I can smell things. I can taste yeah. things. You hear things, but right. yeah, but no, no sight in my dreams. I well, never. first of all, do we have any idea? And maybe you study this a little bit more than us, uh, Louis. Do you have any idea what exactly? Because there's a various theories. Why do we dream? Um, what's, what's the main fo focus behind that? Do you have any information about that or cause I, cause I've got a little well, bit, but you might have more. Yeah. Well, one of the, one of the things that I, uh, researched a little bit is, you know, uh, dream analysis is mainly like a Freudian kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you know anything about Freud, he's kind of like, almost like the godfather of psychology he kind of created this whole idea of the subconscious meaning of things. And then you've got mm -hmm. the conscious meaning of things. Well, in dreams, he also has something called manifest content and latent content. And okay. manifest, con manifest content is the stuff that we actually remember, like the mm -hmm. storylines, the characters that we see in the dream, uh, the words that people have said in mm -hmm. the dream, the things we hear, the things we actually do in the dream. Those are the things that are considered manifest content. And what uh, kind of alluding to the whole idea of, um, of, Freud going into this whole idea of subconscious versus conscience, co conscious, sorry, I, I said that wrong. <laughs> uh, um, when, when it comes to, to, to conscious thought, he's saying that that's the tip of the iceberg. So that's like, uh, you know, if, if you can, even Max, if you can imagine a, an iceberg, well, the tip is kind of sticking out of the water, but the rest of it's kind of hidden underneath the water. So the, there's so he, buried uh, stuff in it too in that dream. Cor correct. So, so what he's saying is, is that you know, um, when it comes to to reality, in reality, not just in dreams, you have you have you have conscious thoughts, but you also have sub subconscious thoughts. Mm -hmm. And he and he says that basically the subconscious thoughts are even bit are even more massive, but they're hidden. Just like an iceberg, it's more massive, but it's hidden. Well, e even on a even on a on a, just a physiological level. Um, even be going before that. Uh, first of all, you only sleep during REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement. That's mm -hmm. how you can tell you're dreaming. That's a true dream. There's, there's, there's like a hypnagogic state, which, which allows you to kind of like half dream. But when okay. you're truly dreaming, you're in REM state. So it's basically a state where your, your body is completely immobilized. And every, and, but, you, but your mind is actually absolutely flying. Like it's active as fuck, like while you're sleeping. Um, mm -hmm. So, so like with, with the Freud stuff, obviously, you know, cause that's, that's the dream analysis stuff, which I don't know. I, my, my, my main focus is more on the physiological stuff. Like the, the reason why we, why we dream, like why physiologically we mm -hmm. dream. Um, and it, it appears to be just like, like just a, a dumping of, of 
energy and yeah. dump. Mm-hmm. You know, well, it's kind of going back. Why to you the, dump it? But that, but the, but the, but the point with what I'm connecting this, I'm sorry, Brett. But I'm connecting yeah, this to the Freud stuff is why do we think the certain? Why do we dump the way we do? Why do we have a dream about walking on a on a slimy fucking floor to take a piss and the and the toilets overflowing? And it's a right. you know, like why do you have that fucking same dream all the time? Right. Or, right. You know, right. Right. So yeah. I just wanted to clarify that 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 it's 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 a physiological thing. So it's not mm-hmm. just a psychological thing. It's a physiological thing we do. We have to do it. If we don't get enough REM sleep, that's, you know, sleep is necessary. Yeah. I Same actually way. did a whole, yeah. I actually did a whole, like, I don't know if it was like two parts or three part series on my mental health Monday about I, sleep. I think I remember and basically that. the, and basically the whole thing about that is that um, a lot of times learning happens, you know, you're trying to figure out something and you're like, fuck, I can't figure it out. And then you go to sleep. And you wake up in the morning, you got and you have a solution, it. right? I got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's happened to me. Where you know, I go to bed and I'm like worried about some shit, and then mm-hmm. uh, I'll wake up the next day. I'm like, oh, I could do this, you know. For so it does it. Well, that's why I, de- yeah. I think depressed people sleep so much because uh, you know usually it allows you to have some kind of solution to your your problem once you wake up. Well. So uh, I think the probably depressed people just want to get away from it all. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, 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 well, that too, it's an escape, but, uh, you know, I, yeah. I think too, they're hoping for some kind of solution or, or something when they wake up or, or that sure, sure. maybe things will, will, will pan out a little better or whatever, you know? Right. Well, it does happen right. a lot though. People do actually get, get solutions to stuff in their dreams. They actually, actually come to conclusions about things or, uh, in their dreams and they carry it over to, to waking life. The trick is to remember the dreams. Um, and that's oh, part, yeah. that's part of it too. Like if you really want to get into the dream analysis and stuff, you have to remember, and most people don't remember their dreams. They don't nope, not no. even like what, maybe like 10 minutes after it's all pretty much gone. Or like, yes. Yeah. S- some dreams stand out gone. though. Some stand out. Oh, you sure. know? Well, and, and especially that's, if oh, you sure. focus on if you wake up in the morning and you think about your dreams for 10 minutes, you're gonna remember them because you're you're getting out of that fog. Um right. And so, like, I've, that's what I've gotten gotten to have doing with lucid dreaming, which we'll get into uh, later on. But, um, but anyways, so, so going back to Freud, I didn't mean to sidetrack mm-hmm. you. So, so, so Freud's no, basically no, no. got the idea about about manifest, which is what you know, like the story you were telling in a dream, and then the uh, other is is the un the under the latent tones, part, um, the undertones yeah, of it, like the meaning behind it, right? So, so like right, the, the, right. the naked dream. I always use that as an example. The naked dream, like maybe you have this fear of exposure or something, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. being embarrassed, right? That would be the latent mm-hmm. part of that dream. Correct. So it's kind of like the underlying hidden meaning behind it. Mm-hmm. Right. And I don't know. It's not. I don't think it's completely scientific. I don't think it's. No. I think. No. I think it's a little bit. I, I think it's some shots in the dark kind of thing. Um, well, but I Freud did get a lot of. <laughs> a oh yeah, lot, Freud's you know. interest. Oh yeah. Uh, sometimes yeah. a cigar is just a cigar. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you know, um, I did get a lot of uh, information. I'm going to just kind of plug this this uh, this website, or it's a not a website. It's a YouTube channel called Psych to Go. Oh yes. Uh, they're they're very good when it comes to uh, making psychology kind of simplified so that the the layman kind of understands it and it's kind yeah. of pretty good. A lot pretty of good cute stuff. female voices stuff. on there as well. Like to, <laughs> I'm gonna have also, to check them out, man. Psych to go, huh? Psych to go, but they also have a lot of great information on typing and also narcissism. So if, in toxic oh. relationships, so interesting. Just, yeah, they are actually pretty decent. Yeah. So, so Louis, what you did indirectly, we, we call that on this show a butt plug. So you just gave somebody a butt plug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, it's very right, accessible. Louis' first butt plug of the of the it's, show. It's everybody. very it's very <laughs> accessible though that website. Uh, so yeah, okay, so, yeah. all right, cool. So, man. so they did a they did a video on like some like some common dreams that happen and kind of what their possible interpretation would be. So we might go through a few of them or something like that. Yeah, but, a matter of fact, know, just, I, I got one right now. I was going to say if you guys okay. wanted me to give go give you if you guys have recurring stuff and you want me to look it oh. up. Oh, well, I can I have... look it up and read some stuff. So here's the first one I've got, which is overflowing toilet. Okay. Okay. Said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> see an overflowing toilet in a dream is quite common, and more significantly, the toilet symbolize. Hold on, let me let me uh, let me go to this. <laughs> That's funny because I do remember having a dream like that one time where I have. This is a common a common <laughs> dream for me. A common dream is an overflowing, disgusting, overflowing toilet. Like overflowing, not just like it's just the brown water. It's just disgusting. Like, like shits coming out of the thing. Yeah, I, I've like, had that yeah. one. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> to see an overflowing toilet in a dream is quite common. So if you think you're the only one who experiences this type of dream thing, again, toilet itself is a symbol of our emotions and sentiments in life. In this, so, mm. But then again, all this stuff is subjective because it's all just, it's like, how, how do you know that's what the symbol is? Maybe for me, an right. overflowing toilet means that I, I really, you know, I, uh, I have some emotions that, that I, I'm getting out. But for, for Max, maybe an overflowing toilet means that he needs to blow a load or something like that, you know? <laughs> well, or it's, a, <laughs> you know, like, whatever, or it's out of control. Like, <laughs> I think it means that out of control something, you know, like you feel uh, like you're not oh, controlling man. something. Well, in the dreams that I have with these, it, it's always the concern if, of getting it on my, because I'm always barefoot. And I'm always walking. A lot of times I walk like I'm going to the bathroom and I walk in this like wet floor. I go, oh, that's the most disgusting. <laughs> like, and I'm in the dream going, oh, God. And then the toilet's overflowing and I'm trying to pee in the overflowing toilet and it's overflowing even more. <laughs> Sounds so, like right. losing control. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like you, yeah. you almost feel like you're afraid to lose control. See, for me, Because you're cruise control. I don't, don't know. I don't control. think. I don't think. That's, I think. I think it might be like like I I I'm I, I'm disgusted by something or something else. But they say the overflowing. That most of the dream books out there state that in general, an overflowing toilet is a representation of your own emotions, and more significantly, the toilet symbolizes that you are trying to get rid of the emotions that you are hiding. Yikes! Um, when it comes to dream lore, an mm. overflowing toilet signifies that your emotions are not being heard or listened. Likewise, there's a need for you to communicate your emotions. Hmm. Uh, okay, well, and that's possible. Is yeah. it? Well, but you're not a you're not a guy who hides his shit usually. You know, if you feel a certain way, you usually talk about it. Uh, it depends. Depends on the situation. But I don't. I don't believe. See, I don't. I don't, I don't know if I like. I don't like. I don't know if I like this this analysis. <laughs> well, you know what? I, what well, I was you know, wanting to do because. Okay, go, so what do we want to do? Oh, I was going to say, maybe we could throw a few dreams out that we've had and see if we could analyze them. That's what I was thinking sure. of doing. But you here's the saying? thing, like, like here's, 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 the, here's the problem that, that, that dream analysis has. Who, how do you analyze them? Like, do we analyze them just as ourselves? Like, or do we go by, like, these, these trusted uh, lore? Because, you know, they have surveys right. and stuff of people who have these dreams and then they talk about right. them. So do you go by the established, like, like this is an established view of toilets. They symbolize this, okay. or do we just go by our own and just? Try I to think we should just go by our own shit. Avoid the know? fuck out of this thing. Let's do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it, oh, man. Well, I, I, I think it's. I think it's also interesting just to kind of throw it out there that each one of us tend to have like some kind of a recurring dream. You, yours is the yours is the toilet or something like that, right? Well, there's a ton of. I have a, several recurring dreams, so we can. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. But but that's one. Um, and places I want to get into as well. Um, because it's, because places I have dreams about uh, Camp Bloomfield constantly. Uh, my old oh, really? I, when I oh yeah I oh I've had Camp about, Bloomfield. I dream, dreams, I dream about being back there now, like being as a as a counselor now. Like yeah, actually yeah. my reoccurring shit is uh it's I, I I'm scared to go backwards. I'm always have a fear of going backwards, and I've actually had some dreams where. You know, I'm back in my old high school, one of my high school classes at my oh, age. Yeah. Do you guys have the dream about going to school and like being late or like ditching, like leaving, like, like you're in school? Like, why am I here? I'm yeah. Yeah. I shouldn't be here. This is yeah. I'm, I'm 46 yeah. years old. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Actually, that's a general one to go. Do you, do you guys both have that dream where you're in school still and you're yep. like, oh, oh, man, I got to get up and go to school or you're waiting for the bus? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Waiting for yeah. buses or uh, sitting in a yeah. class or late for a class, you Usually, know, something like that. Yeah, and, and then so what is what do you, that has to mean? Obviously, that you don't want to go back or or like you're you're I don't know. That's a I think it's a fear of going back, well, man. Yeah. Oddly enough, oddly enough, there's one that was in that psych to go um, video that that caught my eye, sort of so to speak, and okay. being a visually impaired person. Right, right. Uh -huh. nice Put a little joke in there. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, uh, it says failing a test and they're saying basically like, you hmm. know, like a like a like a school test. Right. Even right. though you're not in school and they, they basically say it happens to more to people when they're not in school than when they're in school. Like this is something, you know, it's it symbolizes something. But you're like, why am I failing a test? OK, <laughs> so that means like that means that even starts with like having trouble finding the classroom. I, that's happened to me. Oh, Where right. Like, oh, yeah. shoot. I'm late for a test. Okay, I gotta find the classroom. Shit, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I don't even know where to go. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, being unpre being unprepared because of lack of study, or just missing some equipment. Like with us, we use computers a lot. Maybe right. There's like some missing equipment. You're like, dang, I can't take the test because I use that. I can't right. do it. Mm -hmm. 
Damn. And what that's... they're saying is that what they're saying is that uh, that that symbolizes that in in reality you're being tested in your life, mm-hmm. uh, which makes you feel anxious about what your future holds. So huh. I thought that's that's one that reoccurs for me quite a bit. Not not like on a daily, but like I would say at least once a year. I'll yeah. get something Probably, like that. I'm sure that has to do with the fact that you actually have been taking a lot of tests lately. You have been. Well, yeah, you have for what you're doing. So your mind, <laughs> well. You know what I'm saying? Your mind yeah, isn't touche. That, your, <laughs> no, but your mind is in that frame frame. So, so it might relate yeah. to that life test. Like for me, when it comes to the school stuff, like it's the bus is outside and I can't find my shoes. Yeah, something stupid. And bus, and I'm, I'm trying to find my damn shoes, and the bus is waiting. And if the bus, I don't get to the, and I have to yell at the door, just wait, you know, wait. I can't find my shoes. Right, right. And I'm, I'm actually they, desperately they, they had, they had, they had one yeah. missing public transportation. Oh shit! <laughs> yes, I tell you those. Buses, trains, planes, taxis. Yeah. They say people who dream this type of dream only. Uh, hold on one second. Oh, they only seem to miss the transportation by only a fraction of a second. Like basically, they're like, "Oh, wait, wait, wait!" And they, like the thing's pulling away as you pop yeah. your head. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Or it's waiting outside, and I'm trying to find something. Like, oh my god, I gotta find my shoes, or I'm not gonna catch the bus. Right. Yeah. Like, like and, it's okay. As a matter of fact, oh, okay, oh, good. So in in reality, it says that you're having regrets about not going after after what you really wanted. I was like, hmm. see, I don't know if I agree with that one, man. I think it's more <laughs> you're just like afraid to look like a fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> have, you, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. You're self conscious. You know, so you, guys, like, you guys are being literal about it. But while these people are like, you're, you, you, if you dream about a dog, it means your dad used to ask right you or something. You know? Emotional turmoil. And <laughs> right. The ball, this is a tennis ball. The tennis ball symbolizes the turmoil being seeking something more than what it has right now. Or you know, like what the fuck? Right. You know? No, yeah, no, 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 no. When you're drink, when you're dreaming about a dog, it means that you really, really, really want a guide dog. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's what it is. Yes, that lets you know, man. God damn it. That's what it means. That's what it is. You wish you had a guide dog. You need one. No, not you wish. You need one. You need one. You need right. One. You, yes. need, you need one because people have told you it. And, you know. You need well, you know, the other dog. one that I'm uh, another regress, regressive dream I've been having is uh, dreams that I'm like in where I live now, but my parents live with me. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's kind of like back to where, oh, shit, my parents are here. I got to follow rules. You know, or something, you know, like I, I it's that's another one that I've had. Well, if I if I put my dream cap on, I would say that that symbolizes that you don't want to be controlled by anyone. So I think you, you might be you right. I want to follow yeah. rules. But I, I think you're it's right. not a, it, well, let's let's ask this basic question. It's not pleasant. No, no, no. it's not happy. It's like, not, oh, my parents it's not, are here. Oh, no, it's not pleasant. It's like, oh, my God, I live with my parents. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. This is a straightforward one. Is that you just because because obviously and in, in recently you've, you've been complaining or not, not recently but forever about your you need to get a dog you need to do this you need to move you yeah, move out of your neighborhood so the, the <laughs> worst thing that could possibly happen is if, and it also it might be a strange thing because your parents have been haven't been together for so long oh is yeah to have oh, is yeah. to realize that you're both you're both living with them at the same time right because my mom and dad are both here. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like as a couple, and, that, and that's that's a that's a double whammy. Like that's a that's uh-huh. a maybe a dug up thing there. See, that could be, yeah, like, man. Like, like, old... like that adds that adds more dread to it. Like, yeah, like my. You know what? And and that was the thing when when my parents got divorced, I couldn't wait for them to get divorced because they couldn't even <laughs> be in the same goddamn room yeah. without fighting. Yeah, yeah and that was me too. <laughs> so I'm looking at that now, going, "Damn, how did they even end up together?" You know, it was just the weirdest thing. So. For them to get back together, like if one be, day it, the, it, they, it's yeah, completely yeah, they, disjointing in the dream, so it makes it even worse. Yeah, so it exactly. Been, if it was just one parent, you'd be like, "What?" But if it's both, you're like, "What?" Yeah, they're yeah, both what's, here. What's funny? Yeah. What's funny is my wife. My wife is like the the hopeless romantic, and she says, "Yeah, I bet you your parents could get back together again." I'm like, "Nope, don't don't you <laughs> even know shit like that." No, not don't even happening. go there. Not don't even, even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, and That's speaking worst... of parents, if you have a parent who who you've lost, who you're close to, like I have dreams about my dad still being alive, but yeah, it's always him being alive after him surviving. Like it's never him. Like not. It's like he's alive. Like oh shit, you know. Like it's it's oh never, like the sick version of him. Kind of yes, yeah, it's, it's very uneasy. Oh, it's it's, oh. it's very. 
Uh, it's not like, hey, he's alive. It's like, oh God, he's alive. But is he going to be able, okay, because if he survived, you know, like I right. know, I, I know he went through that because he pancreatic cancer, uh, got my dad yeah. in 2010. So, yeah. and you know, people think it's, and I'm not a spiritual person now, like, oh, he's speaking to you. Like, no, <laughs> yeah. right. no, th right. this is my mind. You know, like he's, it's always, I'm going into his apartment that he's in. And, you know, it's like, he, I know he lives there and there's always a room that's full of like, it's like not lived in. It's just, it's really fucking just weird. an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which so, so I do believe uh, there's obviously a connection between, um, you know, your mind and your dreams. Um, right. And it's obviously something that you can get into. I, I don't believe the dream analysis is, I think it's just, like, it's, um, it's for me, it's like astrology. It's like, yay. Yes. Oh yeah, my God, yeah. a toilet. Well, that's can, why, that's why I say we should I do can, our own. I could say a toilet means like a, okay, so let's, so let's do it. So, so what do you think <laughs> the toilet means, Brett? I, I, Max, I, I, I think the toilet overflowing is losing control. You losing know, like, control. like you're, you're all of a sudden you're going, oh shit, you know, I got all this shit and piss all over my feet literal, it's literal be shit yeah little yeah. shit and it's, it's never clean it's never like a clean toilet it's like no. a brown toilet you can smell it's just yeah the you're laws losing are control laws the sliding situation. over the side or like this big old you know or just brown fluid and oh and yeah it's, it's getting on your feet and you're like oh fuck yep i think it's losing uh, control yeah. of a, and of like, i would i would i would, I would, go, I would, go, with, yeah. I would yeah. go with max on that one over yeah. the loss of control Loss of control of a very bad situation, like something mm -hmm. really spinning out of control that you're afraid of. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of dreams manifest your fears. Because another dream I've had uh, lately was um, like of all my technology fucking up on me. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> my phone all of a sudden stops working. And then my, mm -hmm. you know, talking thermostat will stop working. And I'm like, what the fuck? Because those are the things that give me my independence. <laughs> so I'm afraid of losing my independence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think, I yeah, think you're yeah. right about that. I think that definitely could show a, a, a lack of being able to take care of yourself and having to rely on actual you know, people because the technology is just cold. And that would mean you know, relying on seismic systems. Oh, yes. thank, I, I was yes. going to, I was waiting. I was hoping Re Louis relied, was relying on that. And just just, just <laughs> clenching your teeth going, oh, God. Damn it, relying on sighties, motherfucking yeah. Because yeah, now I have to rely on someone who can see and to do all this shit, and it's like, and, oh fuck. It's, it's yeah. interesting because that, that oh, taste man. of independence, you know, over the last fifteen years, especially for you, having to rely less and less on people, like specific oh. people, because you know you're going to rely on people. Of course, you're, sure. that's never going to go. We away. all do, but relying on specific people to do things for you because they have an attachment to you. Like, could you take me here? Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like my brother today made a comment. Uh, you know, when he was talking about me going to the bar and shit, he's like, "Well, can't you just have a friend drive you home instead of taking Lyft or Uber?" You know, because I think he's afraid of me waiting outside because I could be a. No, nah, he's probably afraid of the drivers. Yeah, I might get ass raped by an Uber driver yeah, or something. Yeah, I don't or know. Some but anyway, it's, it's that kind of shit, you know. And, and like cruise control you need to be said, I, I, all the time. I deal with it all the time, and so I'm sure that's why I have this fear of, oh God, I don't want to be dependent on fucking exactly. people. I think it's the same thing. It's it, the tech, the technology thing is related to the parent thing, the living with it. that. It, they're both the same kind of dream. Yeah, because they're right. both restricting yeah. you and taking away your your independence and and, and freedom. And, yep, and freedom. Yeah. Yep, one yep. one is, well, is a more personal weird thing, you know, and the yeah. other is more impersonal, like, you know, the things that you, you rely on. Well, go ahead, Luke. What, tri what, what, what trips me out is that I, I, I feel like, and I don't know if this is true for you guys, but I feel like I'm not even, <clears throat> sometimes it's almost like when I wake up in the, from the dream, I'm like, where the hell did that come from? Because it has nothing to do with anything that I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. Of course. It has nothing to do with. You know, I, I, it wasn't like I was thinking about being late for a test because I didn't have a test at the time. You know, like I wasn't right. thinking about I wasn't thinking about missing my transportation because I had it all prepared and I was going to, you know, I, I knew what I was doing. So mm -hmm. it was like I, I wasn't even worried about that kind of stuff. And for some reason, the dream still came weird. Well, I've had yeah. dreams about people I haven't seen in years and hadn't thought about oh, in years well, and all of a sudden they pop up in the dream, you know, you're well, like, I had, okay, I got to tell you this dream, guys. This okay. Is a dream oh, I got I one for you guys too. I got, and, and maybe we can ana analyze this one too. But, so it was a, it was a pretty long dream, but at one point I was walking through a mall and, and, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone was saying, dude, watch out for Eddie Murphy. And I'm like, what? So, yeah. Eddie, so, so I, 
<laughs> so I, I go in this yeah. area, and Eddie Murphy's a, this <laughs> ranting homeless dude. And he's like, <laughs> and he's, he, he starts talking, he starts talking shit, and he, and he attacks me. And he starts biting me on my fucking wrist. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, biting my hand. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? So I'm fighting off a homeless <laughs> Eddie Murphy. <laughs> That's funny in itself, the bro. Fa- yeah, the, the fa- <laughs> that, I, that's a drop the mic, man. I, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what to do. I'm like, what does what does this fucking mean, man? Because it was like, you know, like we were in that mall, you know, like you know the the broad the big sections of the malls like that are underneath the the remember Meadows Mall had they had those sections that were like oh where you walk down a ramp or something. You walk down a ramp, but you're in a, a broad area where you can look up and uh, or you can tell like the the somebody above you like a balcony above you yeah the something. balconies but the balconies are broad like a square right he was just sitting there doing he's ta- i don't know what the fuck he, i remember what he was saying but he had one putting bit my fucking hand I'm like what the <laughs> fuck are you doing so i had to I had to fight him off and shit and then i well the fact that he has <laughs> he, he has the name eddie murphy you know like, oh it was eddie murphy dude it was, oh, man, it was eddie murphy dude. oh so it was the real it eddie was murphy, eddie murphy but he was homeless and, and ranting he was and weird. homeless ranting go nah, blah, and he started and he then he just got pissed off at me and I'm like what the fuck man and i go dude hey eddie murphy i'm like what's up dude he's like and then he bit my hand oh shit <laughs> so, well i wonder I don't, I don't know what that means man <laughs> well, I, I don't know about the Eddie Murphy part, but I know like the the homeless guy biting you because I, th- I think maybe you're afraid of like having a person accost you or, or like that's, uh, you know, a little bit not all there. But why? Well, but why? What? Why Eddie Murphy? I don't know. I don't <laughs> like, know. What Freudian watching? shit? What Freudian shit? That's what I'm talking about. The dream analysis. Were you, like, how do you were fuck you watching? Analysis? Were no. you were you watching uh, an Eddie Murphy show? No, right. No, of any kind. No, no. <laughs> it was randomized. Fucking Eddie Murphy. It was just Eddie Murphy. I wonder. <laughs> but, okay, it was let's Eddie, think, let's it was think Eddie back Murphy when you were a kid, old, though. Like, yeah. When you were a kid, did, did you ever go? Uh, man, was there something about Eddie Murphy that may have kind of freaked no, you? He, out he was bit? he was doing that voice. That, oh my god! Blah, 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 almost like the Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where he like gets the off. donkey from Shrek. But that or, yeah, but yeah, or like the yeah. P, um the superintendent on PJs, right? Muriel, yeah, come here, Muriel. Yeah. You know, like that kind of. No, no, no more. Like oh my god, my god. Yeah, like, okay, like the, sh- like the Shrek, the Shrek guy, or 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 um or the good uh what the hell is that guy? The guy uh the, the nutty professor, but not the oh clump the, professor clump, not the clump. No, but buddy love, buddy, buddy Lee, love. Like, okay, yeah, buddy, buddy love. love, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Ah. Bit my hand. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I wonder how. Maybe you always thought that that character was a little bit out there, and you're like, I don't want to meet that. Uh, who fucker. knows, man? But so what? What? What is? What it wasn't Bill dream? Cosby? It, yeah, it could have been Bill Cosby. Shit. He <laughs> hey, nice to talk to you about the chicken to the Well, if it was Richard Pryor, he could have set you on fire. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're a rhyming guy. You've got the power and desire. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. so, all right. I I got one that I think uh, cruise hey. control is going to nail. <laughs> and I already told Louie about this one. But uh, so what happened, this was kind of the inspiration for, for wanting to do this anyway, the dream analysis. So I had this weird dream that I was outside of my apartment waiting for my Uber. And all of a sudden this mm-hmm. car pulls up and these guys, there's like two dudes in there. They're in there like, you know, 20s or something. And they said something to me and I walk up closer to the car. I'm like, what? What'd you say? And the one kid gets out. He's in the passenger seat and he tries to grab me. And I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with you, man? But, you know, and and. Uh, so then he starts walking with me. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Well, he's like, I'm coming with you. And I'm like, coming with me where? He's like, upstairs. And I'm like, no. Uh, and so he comes into my apartment. And I'm like, dude, you need to get the fuck out of here now. I don't want you here. Leave. And he's like, okay, fine. So then he closes the door. And he tried to fool me that he left, right? But then all of a sudden, I hear movement on the couch. And I'm like, you son of a bitch, you're still here. He's like, yeah, I'm still here. And I'm like, okay. Well, then our buddy, uh, G Motors, who you know, cruise control mm-hmm. knows he yeah. was living here at the, or he was living in <laughs> Vegas still. And he comes over and I was like, Hey dude, can you take me to the gym? And he's like, yeah, I'll take you to the gym. Well, this fucker comes with us and we're at the <laughs> gym and we're standing in front of the gym. And I guess these the, like young black kids come walking out. They're about 
maybe six or seven. They were real young. And all of a sudden, the, the asshole person who I don't want there starts talking shit to these black kids. And I'm like, hey, dude, those are kids. What the fuck's wrong with you, you piece of shit? And I'm like, you know what? Fuck this guy. I was like, Jeff, man. All right, dude, we're going to leave his ass here. I'm going to go in there and work out. But when we're done, he's fucking staying here. I don't give a shit how he gets back to wherever he needs to be. But he, he's not coming with us. Fuck him. So anyway, that was the end of the dream. Hmm. <laughs> what do you think, man? What do you guys think? Hmm. This think. is I'm surprised you don't get the cruise, cruise control. This is some shit that I think you would say to me all the time. Oh, this, this definitely has to do with, with your inability to, to not uh, to tell say people no. To no? People. Yeah, yes, exactly. exactly. Because yeah. the first thing, obviously, is that you said, uh, I'm not going up to my apartment. And then you went and then I go. Apartment. Yep. Yeah. And then you're, like, you're going to get out of here. And then he does it. And then when he goes, well, I'm still here. You didn't go, oh, get out again. It went to a different scene. He's right. following you around. Right. And you're like, how do I get rid of this fuck now? <laughs> yeah, because you, you right. need to get rid of him. You need to fucking just yeah. put your dick in the dirt and get rid of him. You know? That's 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 uh that could be a c- completely different show called uh, assertiveness training right there. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and that's then sometimes I I'm not not good with that. Well, I yeah. think I think that's that's why you use the irking is because you actually don't like conflict with actual people. So, so I, you throw your irks out to the nether after not actually dealing with the problem. With the actual problem. Yeah. 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 Because like you still have it, like in my opinion, certain problems that you have, I'm not going to go into detail. I'm like, you should, <laughs> you should fucking have dealt with this shit and it's going to continue to happen. It'll happen again. You know? Yeah. You give, yeah. you give certain people an inch, they're going to take six miles, dude. And, and if you give them yeah. another six inch, six miles, you're going to take a 600 miles. Actually, I shared It'll something about, I shared something about that on Facebook yesterday. I think you yeah. saw it. Yeah, Remember? Probably. Yeah. And I, I said, I need to take this, this advice or some, some kind of shit. Seriously. It's like, it's like you give people like <laughs> at some point you just got to stop, you know, Yep. because yep. it's, it's the whole, um, so I think that's what that means. I think you, I think you have a lot of those kind of dreams, probably, where people are like in your space, and you're like, "Why am I? Why are you here? I'm trying to get, get rid out of you. my space?" But then they're not going anywhere because you're not actually trying to get rid of them because you don't actually say, "Get the fuck out." You're like, "Well, we'll go well, maybe tomorrow." <laughs> you know? We experienced that on my birthday. Remember, we yeah. had a situation like that on my birthday. So <laughs> where I really should have probably said, "Hey, man, you got to go." What do you think, Louis? You you concur? Yeah, I, I think it. I think uh, <clears throat> the whole thing about trying to get rid of somebody and them not going away because you're not persistent enough mm. is, is kind of like the underlying theme of that. That's probably yeah. You're probably right. That's what I was thinking too. But yeah, all right. Yeah, now let's hear a Louis dream, man. Uh, I kind of already spit out one of those ones that you know that's. I don't really remember my dreams that often. However, <clears throat> like I do have those. Like missing the pl- missing the the uh, the you know transportation. I've had I've had that one, okay. and I've had the I've had the the uh, I've had the the uh, um, one where I failed the test, where hmm. for for some reason everything went wrong, and I knew what I was doing, but I was still like, man, I don't have yeah. what I need, or I don't have something. Yep, like um, me is missing shoes. Always my shoes. I can never find my fucking shoes. Dude. That's funny. I think. Uh, I think. Or with- you ever you ever had a dream of like you're trying to put on a shirt and, and you can't get in the shirt won't go on right. So you're like trying to fucking <laughs> get in it and you're like why the fuck and you so you put it on it's inside out like oh fuck so you got to take like I have that dream. I've had but- a, I've had a barf on my shirt dream which is weird because i didn't barf in, in the actual you know what i'm saying like when i woke up i'm checking my pillow i'm like okay i didn't puke. well thank cool. god because the amount of times i pee in my dreams if i actually did so it'd be oh weird. god yeah that's another one pissing in the dream yeah and you're like I, you, yeah you're you know. pissing then you're trying and you're, well the pissing in the overflowing toilet because you're like oh my god is it gonna overflow now because I'm just <laughs> so, so but i think with louis i so, think with louis you're, you have a fear of just looking stupid of like looking dumb, like somebody's gonna, you know, oh, oh, yeah. oh you couldn't pass the test, stupid. Now, you know, or yep. yeah, I think so. I can see I think that so. now. Consider continuing on this. If you do want to remember your dreams and do want to get better at it, there are a couple of things you can do. Oh, yes, that allow you to, lucid to, dreaming, to right? make you and plus, yeah, lucid dreaming is an actual thing. This is scientific fact, it's been proven over and over again. 
uh, Stephen uh, Labarge uh, was the original guy who did it in the, in the um, early, late, late 70s, early 80s, where they'd, they'd tell someone, all right, if you are loose in your dream, I want you to move your eyes a certain way during the dream, back this way and back that way. Because when you, your eyes move, if you can see your eyes move according to what you're seeing in your dreams, your eyes will move around under your closed eyelids. Hmm. So what they did was they measured that so people could look like sideways twice. And they would know that they would, they would, that'd be the signal. Hey, I'm lucid in my dreams. I'm aware that I'm dreaming. So mm -hmm. lucid dreaming is not some psycho babble. Oh my God. It's, I mean, some people think it's astral projection. And if you want to believe that, that's, that's, that's your call. But it's, I think it's just the ability to grasp that you're dreaming. I've had it before where you're just like, oh my God, I'm dreaming. And all of a sudden snaps into clarity and the whole dream is clear. So how do you do that, man? Because if, if obviously in my case, you know, I'm dreaming, I'm like out of kind of out of control in my dream. I just kind of like let shit happen. Yeah. But as long as like, let's say, let's say there's a couple of things you can do. Like, first of all, like I have dreams where I'm at camp or I'm at my old neighborhood where I grew up, uh, Fenway. Right. Okay. So if I can recognize in my dream that I am in a place that I'm not supposed to be. Like I know in my real life, I will not be in that old house. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in my dream going, oh, I'm in this house. And I said, snap, wait, I'm here all the time. I know when I'm here, it's a dream. I am now lucid. That's a key, it's like these call, these little things you, that you can find. Like, uh, like uh, if I know <laughs> I'm, in camp, if it's, I'm in a dream about Camp Bloomfield and I'm, at, I'm on the slab, I know I'm not there because it's not there anymore, right? Right, 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 right. So you know you're not there. She's so like, oh, 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 oh. I know I'm not here, so I must be dreaming. And then uh, the, the the trick is to not go crazy. Well, you can go crazy. Like uh, usually, what I end up doing is is is, is finding a, a hot chick and bone. You know, you, you can because you can do all this crazy shit. You can find a girl. <laughs> See, that's you know, the thing with me. Like sexual dreams, it's like I get right to that point. You know, I'm like rubbing her pussy, and she's playing with my dick. But I never actually get to have sex. I wake up before I even have sex. I'm like, yeah, well, you can you can go crazy with lucid dreams. You can do whatever you want to. Like a lot of times, uh, what I what I what I'm trying to do is not do anything. It's just recognize because when I get lucid in the dreams, because you get oh, I want to like like flying is a nice thing. I just, I'd easily just launch and start flying. Like I love to fly, damn, or or jump like jump really far, you know. Uh, so it really, it's just taking control of your dream, like, yes. damn, yes. and then just recognizing that it is a dream, you know, yes. and not like trying to take control too hard because then you lose control and then it goes to shit. And then, and also the problem yeah. with, with lucid dream is, is remembering your dream. So some tips to remember your dreams um, is if you really want to, is to have a tape recorder next to your bed. Um, mm -hmm. or a, a journal if you write like by hand, but if you want to do just use like a, a tape, not tape recorder, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, well, digital you know, recorder. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah I got recorder. you. Your phone. Your phone, whatever the fuck. Yeah. And, and, and when, when you get up and you remember the dream, you instantly go, you instantly just wake up, you know, when you make, boop, hey, I had this dream, it was about this, 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 you, you try to describe it as much detail as possible, and then you listen to it again, and then you learn how to remember your dreams that way. Um, and that's a slow process of remembering dreams because even if you have lucid dreams, a lot of times you won't remember them as clearly as if you could, uh, as, as if you train your mind to remember them. And that's where I, I have a problem with that. I can't wake up and just grab a fucking microphone and go. Hey, blah, 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 blah. Well, no, God, because I, I, so does, yeah. does that does that does that like <clears throat> create like what they call serial dreams? Because I tried to do that one time when I was a kid. Uh, mm. there was, there, there was a time where I, I was trying to remember, cause I wanted to go back to that dream. It was like one of those good dreams. Like, oh, I right, right. To return. I want to go back awesome. in the dream. Yeah. 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 I want to go back to it. So I would, I would do my best to kind of like remember it. I, I didn't know what I was doing. It wasn't, it wasn't yeah. like I was like, I was trained in, in, in any of this or anything. I'm still not, mm -hmm. not in, not in dreams. Um, so I would try to remember it as best I could. And sometimes I was actually able to go back to that spot, like almost continue on where I left off. And I was like, wow, how did I do that? Huh. You know? Really? So you can, you can kind of like jumpstart your dream from where you left off? Like a, a... I, I don't know. I don't know if there is a such thing as that. Well, I, then I just again, know that when it's you're a kid, you can do shit when you're, you can do shit that you couldn't imagine doing now. Like when I was, a, you know, I, I think I had the same <laughs> shit when I was a kid. Like I would just start dreams up again from the same point. Like, Oh, um, yes. but, but here's the thing. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's not, it's not some 
some voodoo shit you got to do. All you have to do is is try to find things in the dream that you know are not real. Like uh, another thing that people do visually, if you're a visual person out there, is you look at your hand, and if your hand doesn't, if your hand changes color, then you know you're dreaming because in the dream your hand might change color. It might be a purple hand, you know, it might be a green hand, you know. And if it, it might change, or or if you hear something that's out of place, like if you're in your fucking apartment in your dream and you hear a rooster. Oh, okay. Wait, not, so find, not, find things that aren't like that there's, doesn't there's happen. Not a rooster in my apartment. You know? <clears throat> right. So I'm right. sure you have dreams about your that apartment. You know, that, you know, of course, yeah. well, all the uh, time. You know, or but if you have dreams about the kid, where you grew up, like wait. Do you have dreams about where you grew up sometimes? Yeah, like, yeah. No, no, yeah. I do. I have had dreams where I, yeah. I brought so you know my old you house. Do, or... Just go wait. Wait, this can't be real. Right, I don't I, live there. I don't anymore. live there because you're not coming from it from a, as a child. You're coming from it from yourself. That's right. why when you're back there, you're so confused and you're like, "Oh, why am I back here?" Like I have dreams about my old house. Right, I go back to the room. I'm never a kid in these dreams. I'm always going back there, or I'm living there again. I'm never a child in those dreams. I'm myself as an adult. So you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, I, I guess for me too, it's 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 certain inhibitions I have. You know, like. You know, I want to punch somebody in the face, but then I'm like, no, I don't punch people in the face. That's not right. You can't do that. You know, so there's things, but we're really, you, you can't, huh. it's, it's kind of like the, um, you know, you, the, oh, go ahead. You, you brought you brought up something, you brought up something that made me think about something. So like in reality, uh, I used to be able to fight, but I haven't fought in like, I don't know, 25 years. So I don't even know if I can still do it. You know right. what I mean? Right. I've never had a need to do it anymore. You know, it's that's all that's the old me. It was, it was, it's gone. But I, you know, if I have to defend myself, I guess I will. But I don't know. I don't even know if I'll be able to do it. Well, sometimes in my dreams, I punch really hard and it doesn't do anything to the person. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> I've had that. yeah. Or yeah. you can't punch somebody, you know, like yeah. you're very weak. You know, you're like, yeah, you yeah. Know, it's like it's like you're it's like you're swimming. Like, oh! <laughs> you're, like, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to punch someone in water, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, push the yeah. water. Yeah. Or like even trying to run in a dream, yeah. you know, you're like, oh, I gotta get a boy, gotta get away, but you can't. Your legs are like got yeah. concrete in them or something. My, my my thing is crossing streets. Like, oh shit! So I'm trying to cross the street, and all of a sudden, I'm I'm wobbling in the middle of traffic. Yeah, it's that <laughs> oh, shit. Like, you can analyze the shit out of that one, but Man. but another another thing about lucid dreaming that you guys can can uh, might be interested. There are supplements that can help you in lucid dreaming. Okay. Um. There there are, there is actually a plan where there, there's crazy. There's a there are there are some elaborate stuff out there to get you to, to lucid dream. Like wake up in the middle of the night, then go back to sleep while taking this pill. Like there's there's a two pill format. Um, but there's also like galantamine is one, um, which is supposed to stimulate the ability to remember dreams because it, um, it, it works with, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, amino acid, not an amino acid. It's a, it's a, it's, 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 it's a, it's something that's generated in your brain, um, that allows you to help you remember dreaming. It's, it's a supplement. It's natural. Galantamine, you said? Galantamine. Hmm. And then there's who, 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 who best, what does it call? I can find this thing. I don't know anything with poop in it. I don't know if I want to put it in my body. Hup. Funny guy there. What's it called? Hup. Hup Vanessa A. What it was called. <laughs> He's gonna look it up here for us. Find out how to lucid dream better. I mean, I'd like to do that. You know, to kind of take control of my dreams. It's just that I have, you know, I do have my inhibitions of things. I go, oh, wait, that's not right. You can't do that. You know, so you you, you kind of, <laughs> well, uh, you know. Yeah, what what the uh, like uh, what the the main thing you want to do honestly is is the first thing you have to do is have dream recall. Um, so, and that's my that's my problem is I need to get better at dream recall, uh, which mm -hmm. is basically just remembering your dreams because if you can't remember your dreams, you can't get lucid in your dreams because when you are, you're not going to remember them. Right, right. You know what I'm saying it's <laughs> like because you're not going to remember as clearly as you could, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, and that's the main thing to start with. Um, and there's 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 a couple of, of different systems. There's wild, there's mild, but I'll let everyone out there look those up themselves. Um, okay. But the galantamine is definitely one of the ones that I've used before where where it can improve your dream vividness. Like when you're I love vivid dreaming. Like I'm not one to get scared of nightmares. Like Ooh. if I'm in a dream, like I like I like to wake up going, holy fuck. 
Oh, really? So I don't like that shit. I don't like waking up, you know, although there are times where I'm like, oh, God, thank God that was a fucking dream, you know, but uh, yeah, normally I don't like those yeah. dreams that wake you up and then you're like, can't get back to sleep for a couple hours because you're yeah. so traumatized and weirded I out. I think that might be because of where I am. I think that's because I've thought about this for a long time and I've actually kind of worked on stuff is that when I'm in a dream and it's that powerful, I know I'm dreaming. Like at some point, at some level, so I'm never going to be like, oh my God, I, you know, like the dragon's eating my mom, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden you're going, wait, you know? this is a fucking dream, man. You know, yeah, I'm so always like, I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like there's a part of me that's kind of like got it down. So, you know, I'm not hmm. tripping that's out. It. See, that's what I got to do because it's like, I'm, I'm so in the moment. Like, oh, my God, a dragon's eating my mom. Son of a bitch. What do I do? You know, <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, that's the thing. I just react to it. I'm like, oh, my God. No, what do I you know? How is this going to work? Dragons. Um, I wonder what that would be. I you ever, ever dream about a dragon eating your mom. Actually, I've had a, I had one dream one time where uh, I got a knock on my door and it was weird. I was like, uh, who is it? And the guy on the other end goes. Hey, you ever had a motherfucker jack you before? And then he sticks a, a like I can hear him sticking one of those lock pick things in the lock, trying to get it open. And I'm like, this motherfucker's trying to. Get. And so you know, of course, you freak out and you're like, oh god. Where if I was lucid dreaming, I could be like, fuck you, throw the door open and like I don't know, punch him in the face or kick him in the nuts. Or, <laughs> wow, shit. Well, you know, and, and and here's here's a very old school. This is kind of funny. In Will Smith's Nightmare on My Street. Remember uh -huh. one part he says, I figured since this was a dream, I might as well get ill. Yeah, you know, right? So he's doing a little lucid dreaming in that song. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. So the thing about lucid dreaming though is is it's it's when you realize you're lucid, there's a sense of freedom. So that guy that that guy would have probably gone, like he would have probably disappeared. Probably. Like you would have been like, ah, oh, I don't want to deal with this. And it, it wouldn't have been like unless you wanted to open the door and start fighting. But fighting isn't really something you, you know, you don't it's like any dream. When you try to fight someone in your dream, you're going to punch and it's going to be like, eh. Right. You know, I'm going to beat your ass. Oh, man. <laughs> so you what, know, would it, what would have been a, a lucid dream reaction to the, the guy trying to break in the house? What, what would you do? Me? I would probably go, wait, I'm dreaming. And then all of a sudden I would, the, I would just open the door and it'd be on a beach or something like that. Oh, I see. So then the guy would disappear. That's yeah, it would just be gone because because it's, it's all about the fear. There's always it's like wait, I, I I'm dreaming. I'm I'm in my you know. So facing or, the or fears. you might you might you might be able to fight him if you're you know if you're, I don't know. I mean that would be the instinct thing to do. Like, yeah, but man. there's but you might be like, yo, come on in, man. What's your problem? And you're like. And all of a sudden he'll dissolve and it'll turn into your friend. And then you'll walk in and all of a sudden. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. Because try what, some what, you're, what you're doing in your dreams, think about it. You're fighting against yourself. Like, why are you going to fight against yourself? That's true. You know? That's true. Right? Well, I guess you think it's a threat. It's a guy trying to do something to you. Yeah. You know? yeah Max, Max, is, Max is secretly a, a, a house jacker. Yeah, I'm a, come, a home invader, man. <laughs> That's what he does, dude. I'm a home oh. invader, right? K K K uh K uh K V V U news uh, at seven. We have a new uh, incidence in the same complex on <laughs> where a guy gave a right. home invaded his own home. Home invaded other people's <laughs> homes. Yeah. yeah. He well, that's, claimed uh... that he claimed that he couldn't find his own house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, I... strangely enough, he had a. He had he was able to jimmy the door, not unlock it with yes. a key. <laughs> Strangely enough, it was when they were never home that he went into their places. <laughs> <laughs> they call him the blind bald bandit. <laughs> B cube. That's another one. Where where B3. You're, where you're in a you know, like an abandoned building or something, and you're walking through there and you're like, what the fuck am I in here for? You know, and and uh Ooh, There's all kinds of stuff. Building. What would that be? Hmm. I don't know. Or just like an abandoned or room full of machinery. You know, you're walking around. I remember one time I did have a weird dream. Like there was all these machines and I'm like, well, should I go up to one of these machines and see what the hell it does? And then uh, I heard something. I was like, okay, fuck it. So I like stopped at this, like it was like a carpeted area and I heard something open above me and I'm like, oh, okay. And then something tickled me and I woke up. 
Hmm. <laughs> you guys well, ever, um, okay. that, that site, that site to go says that if you feel like you're being trapped in like a building or like caught up in a maze where you can't get out, you're not, you know, something, something to where you, you it's kind of similar to what you're hmm. saying. Uh, it says that you're unsure about what the next step that you want to take regarding mm. a certain circumstance in your real life. That uh, makes sense. Uh, and that could be, I can you see like that. I said, all this stuff makes sense. All this stuff makes like, you can make the analogies between all this stuff, like can't find your way out, you know, yeah. so you don't know where you're going, obviously. So it's not really that far of a stretch, like for these, these analysis, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, well, I like you know, your analogy of astrology. Like it's not a hundred percent, but it's you right. know it's a good explanation for something you know mm-hmm. i think i honestly think though there's a lot to the uh theory that uh, it's just a brain dump like your brain just dumping probably so <laughs> and, and you can sift through it and maybe find some stuff but a lot of times it's just nonsense too like it, you can't oh yeah you can't say every single time like that's why the recurring stuff i think is interesting because obviously that's a pattern in your dreams yeah i just hate that i can't you know. fight my dreams yeah, yeah. Oh, I hate that too. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like the biggest bitch in my dream. I don't know? think that I don't think there's any way anything to extrapolate from the Eddie Murphy scene. I think that was just a random mishmash. <laughs> you know, Get bit by Eddie Murphy, huh? Yeah, you know, like I think that was just kind of like, all right, let's see what happens here. But like, like the recurring stuff, like, like the not having your be able to find your clothes or your shoes or, or like, or like you're you're trying, like you have a. You, you know you have to catch a bus but you can't find something and you're and you know oh god i gotta get there like i had that dream the other day and it wasn't it was a camp bloomfield dream it was beach day and i was trying yeah. to find all my stuff to get back to the camp because i had to get on the plane so i had to go get the bus to back to camp to get to camp and then at camp i couldn't find shit to get to the fucking airplane and well was, you know oh, that that's god. you in real life man <laughs> <laughs> i've seen you in real life not being able to find shit going where the yeah. fuck are my keys or that's whatever true. You know? that's true that's that's definitely definitely part of definitely some like, so i think it is some yeah. of it has, holds some truth yeah. you know like certain things about it like we were talking about the technology fucking up fear yeah. of me losing my independence you know that kind of thing those, those are real fears i think that our brain plays with sometimes yeah so. Or a new one for me is is like knowing I'm going to be on a bus for like eight hours and going, oh my god, I can't be on a bus for eight hours. What am I going to do? Like, oh god, I can't be stuck in a fucking bus for eight hours. Like, uh, uh, uh. so you're afraid you of traveling too, man? Shit. Yeah, doing the Greyhound. <laughs> no, I'm not going on a bus. It's just a dream. Like you dream, like you're on a bus. Like you have to get on a plane for four hours, so you're never going to be stuck in the middle seat for four hours. Mm, next you to know. the old fat guy yeah, like just just <laughs> yeah that kind of dream. anyway yeah that kind of dream <laughs> that kind of dream yeah so That's... uh so yeah this is it's an interesting subject you we can go you know into it further obviously there's a lot of of you know different uh, ways of, to analyze it a lot of people think that dreaming is astral projection in terms of like your spirit leaves your body and you're doing other shit and that's different you know Oh, yeah. Well, I've heard about that, too. The astral yeah. planning and you go to another dimension and all that other weird shit. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know, man. It seems like uh, most of my shit is, is you know, stuff that, I, you know, I could see happening or I could joke about yeah. happening or something. But it's never, you know, I've never gone to like the land of Vuladu and battled the evil wizard collect the door or some shit you know so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like but- that, 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 those are my kind of dreams you know what i mean i've done that shit a little bit sometimes. well yeah you like but you, read, <laughs> but you read books about shit like that that's yeah, you I like do. that stuff i do like see for me and we've talked about this before i don't like fantasy so you know like if it's something that i couldn't see happening i let's, couldn't read a let's book let's rephrase about that you don't like fantasy that, that isn't uh, layered in the real world like you wouldn't right. mind people with powers fighting shit in the real world it right if it's fucking... something that i could see happening here on earth then that's one thing but yeah, yeah. When it's in another alternate you know galaxy or whatever on planet Vecklador or whatever you know it's like what the fuck what is this shit yeah that's, that's yeah. then plausible for me so you know so any final thoughts on dreams or anything you wanted to talk about uh lou any other things you'd like about uh that you you've gathered that you wanted to go over um not really i mean <coughs> excuse me i think I think with the dreams, I think I think it is true that it, that there might be some hidden meanings behind it. But then in reality, it's like, who's to say? It's way too subjective. Yeah, yeah. And it's like there's not there's not enough scientific evidence to prove it. Uh, in fact, 
Um, one of the main things that Freud's critics will say about him in general is that a lot of this stuff is not scientifically based and it's all like, well, it was made in the crazy person's head. Yeah, the he, crazy was coped, person? he was coked out Freud. of his skull too. Oh yeah. Well, Freud, Freud, Freud was kind of considered a crazy person. You know? Yeah, he was he coked out of his skull. Yeah, he was coked out. Yeah. Too. And we, we all know who, you know, like with people that, you know, use drugs and shit, they all get these realizations. I had a realization, bro. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know? They're always having realizations. So, yeah, it could just be some of that shit, you know, where you sit and you think, you know, what you're talking about. But yeah, and plus, you know, it was, right. it was, and also, it was, it, Freud was way before, um, you know, the scanning and stuff, uh, potential that we have yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You see the brain and actually see how it works on their dreams, like see how people are yes. actually, what, what areas like, the brain even, light even up. Now, so even now, it's not, it's, you, you can't, like, as far as like, conscious thought versus subconscious thought it's still just like a it's like a it's not it's not a true like scientifically based thing it's just something that yeah could be possible but we don't really don't know because it's kind of beyond our scope of knowledge yeah, really. yeah true and and also it's it's also a, a philosophical thing though uh, as a mm -hmm. tool though to help yourself like if you do have dreams about an overflowing toilet and you realize that there's something <laughs> you no, know, and you go, you know what, what does this mean? And you start thinking about yourself and what barriers you have, or maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah. I agree. Go, I agree. That would, oh, that would be you know. useful as far as that. Concerned, yes. You know? Yeah. Yes. Well, I think, I think the there is salt, some truth you know? to, you know, like fears. Yeah. Sometimes our fears manifest in our dreams or things that we yeah. like manifest in our dream, you know? So right. it, it's basically your mental makeup. You know, so if all of a sudden you don't have that dream anymore and you're and you're doing well in a certain part of your life and you go, wait, oh, well, huh. like, maybe it maybe it does correlate to something in my life. Or even if it just helps you yeah. think about it, go, wait, am I having this yeah. issue? Like, why am I walking in shit in my dreams? <laughs> well, you know, here's a funny thing, because <laughs> I, I was telling uh, I was talking to Koala about yeah. this that we're going to do tonight. And, sh and uh, she said she used to have this dream about a it was a reoccurring dream about an elevator out of control. You know, like it was tipping and it was all this shit. Well, I guess there's a ride at Disneyland. I haven't been to Disneyland in God, 20 something years, 30 something years, damn near. But uh, anyway, they have a, new, a ride there now called the Tower of Terror. And I guess it's, yeah. it's kind of like a um, it's based you know, on the Twilight Zone. Yeah, well, it's like an out of control elevator, apparently. Well, when, mm -hmm. when she went on that ride and then when they they gave the backstory, she's like, oh, shit. So she did this ride. Well, after she did it, she said she hasn't had that dream anymore. So it was almost like facing <laughs> the fear, you know? Right, right. So, you know, hmm. kind of a kind yeah. of an interesting thing. Really, if you go into lucid dreaming and stuff like that, it's very fascinating what you can do in those dreams because you can face your fears. Like, let's say you actually have a fear of Michael Myers. Oh, yeah. You know, like, like, and then and all of a sudden you see Michael Myers in your dream and you wait, I'm dreaming. And you just or stand Eddie there. And you, and you, or Eddie Murphy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 this is like psycho. <laughs> I can never imitate his laugh. It's like, uh, 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 you know. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> wow. With that, <laughs> that was uh, wow, man. I never dreamed we'd have such a great show. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good one. <laughs> oh, 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 Freddy shows up. God damn. <laughs> Actually, I you know what, man? I had a dream we were interviewing Tone Loke one time, and we were at oh. a we were doing it from yeah. a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, we? Yeah. Yo, yo, Zemsy Tone yo, Loke, you know what I'm saying? That's going out, man. Yeah. It, it was weird because it was like we had uh you know, I had the headphones on, and I'm like sitting in a That's booth. actually where I got Lou Loke from. No, from, from Tone no, Loke. No. <laughs> Max, you were sitting in a hotel. No, I wasn't. I was shopping at the mall, looking for some gear to buy. <laughs> so, yeah, my own ride. So yeah, that's uh. <laughs> bow, bow, bow. Ow, ow. <laughs> please, better, better, please. <laughs> That it was a dream about the dog doing the wild thing on my leg. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that everyone. <laughs> oh, this is our shrink wrap show. <laughs> My name is Cruise Control, and I'm Maxwell Silverhammer. And, 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 <laughs> and that's, that's the story. Yeah. yeah, actually, you should have said Lucifer. <laughs> We are nothing sacred. We are nothing sacred. We are nothing sacred. With Maxwell Silverhammer. We are nothing sacred. With cruise control.